A lot of us have small model railroads, myself included, but we all love those big model railroads. Today, I'm talking about ways that you can make your small model railroad feel big on coffee and trains. Welcome everybody to another edition of Coffee and Trains. Before we begin, I am drinking Grounds and Hounds Rescue Roast. It's a medium roast and it is from the Grounds and Hounds Coffee Company. And I wanna read you their mission really quick because it's pretty cool. 20% uh, of all proceeds generated by this box of coffee right here are used to fund life-saving animal rescue initiatives close to where you brew. By funding programs ranging from food subsidies to microchipping, we work to ensure that the impact of your purchase makes a tangible difference for a pup in need. So very, very cool uh, grounds and hounds. I'll put a link to them in the description below. Love uh, something with a purpose like that. And as always, I take it black with two sugars. So today we're going to be talking about small model railroads and small model railroads are what the vast majority of us have. We don't have those basement empires. And a lot of times we look at them and we see the, how small they are and we have the, the eyes, the longing eyes for the big model railroads. But there are things that we can do to make our model railroads feel a lot bigger than they are. And today I'm going to talk to you about three ways that you can make your model railroad feel bigger than it is. Let's get started. The first is a fairly simple one, depending on how you've constructed your layout. If you have it like me, where it is something that's meant to be portable, this is really easy to do. And that is to increase the height of your model railroad. And let me show you what I mean. So this is a shot looking down on my railroad and at its lower height. Now, if I raise the height up, it increases the angle of viewing, which gives it a little bit more depth and gives that illusion that it is larger because I can see less of it because it's closer to my eye. I like a height of around 40 to 48 inches, um, maybe even a little bit higher depending on who you are. But having a model railroad put up higher it's going to make it feel bitter, bigger because you can see less of it and that is the one big thing that can make a model railroad feel bigger um, and it's actually going to be a theme of quite a few things here the second one really kind of deals with the planning and construction of that and that is to break up your line of sight with your model railroad with scenic breaks these are things like hills buildings tunnels, things like that, things that you can't see the entire train on the railroad at once, making it difficult to see the entire train on the model railroad at once by doing scenic breaks is something that adds a little bit of mystery of like, where's the train going? Even if it's very, very subtle, it's going to make your model railroad feel a little bit bigger because you can't see the train for a second and then it pops out somewhere else. And that is a really great way to make your small model railroad feel a little bit bigger. My third tip is another design tip, but it really comes into how you make your scenery. And the way that I got this idea was actually from looking at different modules, specifically T-Track modules. Now, T-Track modules at their smallest are not very big, but they're essentially like model railroad dioramas. And if you break your scenes up and you have separate scenes for your trains to run through, they're like little dioramas on your layout. So make little dioramas on your layout. For instance, on MRR1, I actually have technically four, if you really think about it, I really consider it three, but I have a town scene, I have an industrial scene, and I have a wilderness scene. And if you want to go technically the fourth, we have the junction scene with the station, but I really kind of consider that part of the town scene. So by breaking it up, you have areas for your train to pass through that you can isolate and look at. And if you follow the other tip of having scenic breaks, you're going to be able to break that up so you see the train just running through this little diorama, for lack of a better term, on your model railroad. And it can definitely make your model railroad feel bigger because you can focus on one area and the train enters and leaves it rather than you watching the entire train go around the whole time. All right, guys, I do want to address one thing from Monday's video, which you haven't watched. I'll link it right up here. And that is the turnout situation where I had to replace the turnout. I actually went back through the footage and I saw where the issue was happening. And it's where the uh, points would literally kind of jump a little bit. And I saw it when one of the tests was passing over the other. And I'll show you the clip right now. 
and you can see the point just barely jump and you can see that it's just not setting quite right there so there's some issue right there and I just decided to pull it and replace it rather than trying to fix it so let's go on to some of the coffees that you guys are drinking guy mason is drinking imperfect foods anytime blend i that is a very interesting name and it makes me want to try it uh metra mp 36407 says that he's drinking a morning blend boston style with cajeta uh, mexican caramel is what that is that sounds absolutely delicious and david f says that he's drinking Tubo's coffee in the cafeteria with extra grounds at the bottom of the cup. That sounds like coffee. <laughs> and last but not least, Jeffrey Perdue is drinking Alpha Coffee Double Barrel Black. So thank you guys so, so much for watching. I wanna say a big thank you to all of my patrons. They are listed right here. You can become a patron for as little as $1 a month, get a lot of behind the scenes access and interesting things. So thank you guys so, so much for watching. Until next time, I'm Jimmy from the DIY and Digital. Stay safe, be kind, drink some coffee, and happy railroading.